Adrian, great to see you. Yes, Simon. Great to see you. Um, we're going to spend a few minutes talking about uh, nut free schools. We get a lot of calls coming through on our helpline um, from parents wanting their schools to be nut free, but also our super popular Safer Schools program uh, where teachers ask us, you know, how do you set up a, um, a nut free school? But there are some challenges around that, aren't there? Um, but but let's let before we kind of dive into that, let's uh, let, let me give you a few minutes to introduce yourself. You're up in Scotland and a consultant paediatrician. That's right, but I, I lead the allergy service here. We're just outside Glasgow uh, and I've been doing that for 10 years, well, more than 10 years now. Um, but I've also got the role of uh, lead for allergy for young people and children uh, across the whole of Scotland. So uh, we have a network of interested uh, health professionals um, and uh, we, we have a range of different projects that we're doing. Um, education uh, for professionals, also uh, information for, for parents and families. Um, and yeah, so I'm the I'm the lead for that. That network just started this year and for the next couple of years. So I, I imagine when uh, when parents first take their child to a uh, to come and see you, one of the one of the first things they may may well think of is, you know, I've got to get our school to be nut free. And, um, you know, it's certainly reflected in, in, in the calls that we get to our helpline and, um, and and teachers asking us those sorts of similar questions. But, you know, it's not as straightforward as that, is it? No, so going to school or, or nursery and then school is, is such a big thing for families who've got an allergic food allergic child. Uh, it's that letting go and having to let other people take care of your child. And, and often nice the, child, the yeah. children will be getting food from the school unless they, they're going to bring packed lunches every day. So, it, yeah, going to nursery, going to school is is a is a big thing for uh, an allergic family. So, of course, it kind of makes sense. The idea, well, you just cut out the nuts from school um, that that kind of has some superficial Move logic risk. to it. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it it actually isn't that simple, uh, and actually it's not what we even recommend um, as as allergy professionals. Um, and and there's a couple of reasons for that. So I guess the first reason is that nuts are not really any different from any other kind of food allergy. To be honest, um, there are children who are allergic to milk and egg and lentils and peas and all kinds of things, and and often combinations of those things so it's basically impossible for a school to be allergy free isn't it ex exactly so so that it, already there's not a lot of logic in just cutting out one food partly because most of the children will be able to eat that food without a problem but what about all of the children who have allergies to other foods are you just going to cut out all of those foods for everybody that's obviously not workable mm. and yes nuts we know can cause severe reactions including anaphylaxis but even even milk allergy um, still causes deaths from anaphylaxis every year. We see that. Indeed, yeah. So I mean, if if a parent, I mean, we're just talking specifically really about the uh, a nut free school, but the same could apply for, you know, if, if a school, for example, has got a pet. Um, very often, sometimes you have a dog there or cats and you know hamsters and so on. You know, but some children could be allergic to uh, to animals as well, couldn't they? Uh, and as you quite rightly say, you know, the 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 the, uh, the milk allergies and you know a whole range of others. It doesn't mean that all children are therefore safe. If if somebody if a school or somebody decides to make that school you know, a particular allergy free school, such as the the peanuts. So how how would you challenge a parent who's you know really adamant to say, well, you know, uh, uh, if this school doesn't have nuts. How does it work in practice? Because surely, you know, how are they going to? How would schools police it for a start? I ask myself. Yeah, so of course it's absolutely essential that the school knows about the specific allergies that that child has, uh, and if there's any doubt about allergies, that's something that needs to be explored by the the, the professional, the the allergy clinic, or whoever's looking after your child. But once you know what allergies you've got, that needs to be shared with the school, and that needs to be in a formal way. And and it's not necessarily just about the food in the in the dining room. It, it could be 
to do with uh, foods that get used for activities. You, you hear about stuff being brought in for arts and crafts and, and different things. So it's it's not just about the, 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 the dining room or the, or the, or the meal times. Um, so knowing about it is important. But we also want the child themselves to know that they have to be careful of what they eat. And that might seem really unfair when you, you've got a very young child who's who, who may not even remember having had an allergic reaction because it happened when they were a baby. Mm -hmm. But I've I've got families who, even when the child is three, can can go and and check with their parent, can I have this? Or they can even say, nuts in this. Very simple phrases, but they can even at a very young age actually understand that they can't just help themselves to food and take it. And of course, that is the most important thing, especially if that's a, an allergy that's going to go forward through that child's ho whole life. They have to have that skill to be able to be careful of what they eat. Because at the end of the day, you can ask parents not to provide your children with snacks um, that contain nuts or, or, or whatever food it is that a child has an allergy to. But it's not 100% reliable, is it? And that and that's not because parents are selfish or, or, or whatever. People will make mistakes. And even those schools who do try to be nut free, I hear stories all the time uh, of, of even the teachers bringing in uh, advent calendars that have little chocolates in them that actually contain nuts or milk or whatever. So it, it's so innocently done. Do you think it also breeds a bit of complacency and you know that the, the, the teachers and others in the school think, oh, it's a nut-free school, and you know, kind of over time, if you forget about it, and uh, but then you know, the parent, the child with that uh, allergy, then uh, because they're living with it every day, you know, that they 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 don't forget, and 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 you know, accidents can then happen by people inadvertently bringing it in because they'd forgotten about the policy or the school being you know so-called nut-free. Exactly. I mean, it's nice the idea that a child who's got an allergy can go to school and not worry about it. But but that's a bubble in, in the, that child's whole life. They're still going to have to go out to eat with their families or their friends. They're still going to have to go to parties. They're still going to have to stop for snacks when they're traveling somewhere else. So even that idea of having a, a temporary safe bubble in school doesn't reflect day to day life for a families who've got an allergic child. You just have to be vigilant all the time, and that's hard. Uh, and we know families can get really anxious about that. And we, and we don't want we don't want families to suffer from excessive anxiety. But unfortunately, that constant vigilance is just part and parcel of living with a, a food allergy that potentially could cause severe life threatening reactions. And like you say, if 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 a child becomes complacent about or the, the family about not having to worry about what they're eating because there's this idea that there's no nuts in the school. The child is going to go to secondary school at some point to high school and everything's going to change because there's just no way that a secondary school can can try and be nut free when you've got kids going in and out and you've got thousands of children going in and out buying things bringing them in. It's just not possible. So yeah any any sort of temporary a safe bubble that you can make it, it, it's it's going to come to an end anyway even if it was realistic in the first place so we believe as, as health professionals it's it's much more sensible just to uh encourage the skills that that child and that family needs to have going forward uh, and just practice them every day because actually things that you do every day become normal they become habits um it doesn't become such a big deal Whereas actually trying to kind of swap in and out of that that vigilant mindset, turning it on, turning it off, that that's harder than actually just being in the habit of doing it every day. And that might happen between sec primary school, secondary school, that chance. Then they've got to really reshift, haven't they? That yeah. way that they think, as well as the kind of stress of going to a new school and making new mates and all the rest of it. Um, it really is a big shift. So uh, uh, would you say that a more sensible approach as well <clears throat> would be for the whole school just to be more allergy aware. Um, I mean, I'm going to do a blatant plug here for our Safer Schools programme, which is absolutely fantastic that teaches all staff within a school and provides lots of resources for teachers and others within that school on 
on being, uh, a, you know, kind of a whole school approach, being allergy aware. But, but, I mean, things like um, handouts and lesson plans and and assembly, you know, to, to teach other to other children, um, but, but not just singling out that child with with a particular or those children with allergies. Yeah, that's it. So. Like we said, it's it's not just about nuts. There's going to be children who are allergic to other things or, or combinations of things. So that having that broader awareness um, is really important. Um, and and just from my own life, my my son doesn't have allergies, but he came home and he knew so much about his friend's peanut mm -hmm. allergy in his mm -hmm. class. Uh, and and sometimes you hear stories about children being mean about allergies. To be honest, I think that's really unusual. Most children that I know really care for each other. They really care about somebody who's got a health condition that means that they have to be careful of what they eat. They seem to yeah. understand it really quickly and they yeah. know that actually they, they, they've got some responsibility to, to look out for, for their friend. Uh, and I see that. I hear that all the time. I think that's fantastic. And that's that's really the way I think we would want to go is, is that. It's just that awareness. Uh, in, yeah. You hear all the time that understanding awareness of allergies in, in the public isn't great. And, and you can understand why there's mixed messages, there's confusing messages. But to, to increase awareness among children, among the staff in the school, and that's not just about the teachers. We know that support staff is important as well. And um, I think that is definitely the, the way forward. Everyone benefits from that. Right. Great. Well, it's given a given a, 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 a helpful insight and a bit more of an explanation. So perhaps, um, you know, we can refer to you and, 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 and this video in particular around when when people uh, come to us, like the teachers and the parents to say, well, you know, I want to want us want a nut free school and, you know, kind of the um, the reasons why that may not be such a good idea and adopting a, a whole school approach is far better at, uh, at being more allergy aware. And I think what I'm hearing in, in my neck of the woods here in Scotland is that schools are getting really good. Yeah. Um, it, it's becoming very normal for them to have new children starting who have food allergies. It's not a big surprise to them. They've already had training in, in, in what to do. So, you know, there's, there's already that knowledge and awareness often. So, yes, it's 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 a big deal for you to, to hand over your child to the care of a school for the first time. Mm -hmm. But there's a good chance that they already have some awareness and some understanding. And there is the training out there available for them if they need it. Um, and yeah, that's that's the work that Anaphylaxis UK does. Adrian, great to speak to you. You too. Thank you. Thanks very much indeed. Bye bye. Cheers.